back, I had the opportunity to fill in for a friend of mine out in Chicago, Illinois, Mr. Don McNeil, who's been doing the breakfast club out there for about a thousand years. <clears throat> and, uh, nearly. <laughs> and, uh, I had the opportunity to work with the lady that I'm about to introduce. And she's just one of the delightful people in our business. Say hello to Aunt Fanny, if you will. <laughs> Ted, ask me over to watch the TNV with you. Is your set working good? Well, well, uh, well uh, one thing, uh, it's not exactly watching television. Oh, well, now, don't worry, because we're too late for today's recipes and too early for tomorrow's weather, and what else is all that counts? <laughs> <laughs> you got to I want to apologize to you, because I was going to bring you a little sack of a homemade cookie. Wish you had. But I can't get into my kitchen. Well, it ain't my kitchen. It's my niece, Abigail's uh, kitchen. That you married me. No, she ain't married. No? Now, I'll tell you, uh, would you ever dream that a girl that's good-looking, a good figure, a good cook, and loaded would have any trouble getting a man? Never. Yep, she just had any one of them things going for her. <laughs> well, to get back to the kitchen, I don't suppose that you have saw the new kitchen. No, I haven't. You would not believe what goes on there. Really? Now, a horrible convenience. Uh, the first I caught on to it was I come from the grocery, and here come the neighbor lady waving her hands, and she says, Fanny, there's a bird in your kitchen. I said, there's a what in my what? <laughs> she was right. Yeah. Here come a pigeon uh, flying out the window. Well, I went in there, and that wasn't all. There was a storm in my sink. Yeah. Hot and cold waves dashing back and forth, pigeon feathers sloshing over the low end. Well, you know, and you see, it takes all the work out of dishwashing. Yeah. And it sure did. It washed them right out the window, pigeon feathers and all. <laughs> and while the storm was raging, the sunshine was just blinding. Now that, they tell me, and I think, is all due to the washing machine. Oh? Now, I had some things I wanted to wrench out, you know. So I lifted up the lid. You'd never believe it. What I saw, there inside, all scrunched up, was a fellow about the size of Sonny Liston with his fist sticking up in the air. <laughs> who are you? He says, I'm a giant in your washing. I said, I don't care who you are. I said, there's not room enough for you in my laundry, so get out. <laughs> well, I then went to work. I put my clothes in and uh, shut the lid. And my gosh, uh, that machine shot up to the ceiling, poked a hole in the room. Yeah. I wouldn't wonder if that's where all the sunshine and birds is coming from. <laughs> and I can't tell whether I got my clothes clean or not. I, I, I missed the balloon to check on them. Well, anyway. <laughs> Would you believe I was out in my backyard minding my own business on my way to the garbage can? Here come a fellow with a tin suit on, on a horse, <laughs> waving his spear. Well, I'm Algeric to Sharp Point. <laughs> Not me right on my grapefruit run. You, you know, you got problems. I, you know, I'll tell you, if you'll take a little suggestion from me, why don't you get some help? Easier said than did, Mr. Dean. Oh. I had one lady there for two days, and she said she wouldn't stay unless I got her water wing. <laughs> then the second one said she didn't mind swimming around with her mop bucket, but she wasn't about to clean up after all those pigeons. <laughs> so I went as far as to run an ad. And somebody showed up, not a lady, but a great big bald-headed fellow with a ring in his ear. <laughs> He might be from around here. He said his name was Mr. Klein. <laughs> well, he seemed anxious enough to get the job, you know. Real willing fella. Said he'd clean the whole house and everything that was in it. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. Actual, all he did was walk around with his chest puffed out and his arms. <laughs> and I'll tell you, Mr. Dean, I'm a little worried about an overgrown, bald-headed man wearing earrings that passes itself off as a clean lady. <laughs> But I've got to get home. I'm expecting a polar bear in my icebox. Besides, <laughs>